let's talk about the pros and cons of doing pg in psychiatry uh, i have received many questions and i have tried to cover most of them in this uh, presentation so the first question is can i do it typically students say that i am an introvert and i am an emotional person i am a sensitive person can i do it my i want to do psychiatry but my friends say that you would get impacted the answer is a big yes it does not matter what kind of personality you have uh, once you start training in psychiatry uh, you learn how to deal with patients you learn how to communicate with patients your personality traits does not really have a big impact on how good a psychiatrist you end up being uh, so there is there are, no, there are no doubts about it irrespective of uh, the kind of person you are you can definitely get into psychiatry sometimes students also ask that they themselves had depressive symptoms or anxiety symptoms can they do psychiatry again the answer remains the same yes you can do psychiatry having some psychiatric issue yourself does not mean that you cannot become a psychiatrist so uh, be assured that uh, nothing of that sort is going to you know, stop you from becoming a good psychiatrist all right this is the most important question that every student keeps on asking again and again again and again will i make enough money and uh, see the answer is uh, dependent on multiple factors and it's not only about psychiatry i keep on saying the same thing for all the branches how much money you make is not so much dependent upon your branch but what exactly do you do you do with that branch and and don't think i'm going into that whole idealistic approach that uh it's upon you it's not that it's upon what you do what do i mean by that say you are planning to become a psychiatrist and say you decide to start an de addiction center or you start an inpatient setup or you start doing the procedures like rtms and all doing all those things will come with a lot of responsibilities if you want to run a de addiction center it has its own practical problems you have to get a place and you have to get the staff and you have to get take care of medical legal issues legal issues same applies to having an inpatient setup so if you are happy doing all these things you'll make a lot of money there's no question about it right and similarly if you go to a government hospital you join a government hospital then you would be paid what everybody else is paid and this is true not only for psychiatry for any branch if you if you do your if you say you become a cardiologist and you join a government hospital you will make what government pays you and if you open your own center and you know start doing interventions and all you start making more money as medical students you think that the money that you make as a doctor is dependent upon the branch primarily in reality that is not true branch is a very small part of uh, 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 the many determining factors that end up uh, you know deciding how much money a person a doctor makes so again if you want to make a lot of money you will have to take care of a lot of trouble and you know you do these things you make a lot of money uh, second thing is can a psychiatrist make good money in second tier or third tier cities so the again the answer is yes uh, i mean uh, since last eight nine years uh, when i got into practice I, i have been in touch with many of my friends and seniors and juniors who went to smaller cities like alhabad or bhopal or you know indore is not so much a smaller city but tier 2 cities right and uh, all of them have been doing good uh, see almost 25% of you know people population develop a psychiatric illness once in their lifetime at least so the number is huge despite all the stigma that is there even even a small minority of patients when they seek help ends up in you know a good number so uh, there is never a shortage of number of patients in psychiatry of course it takes time like it takes in any other field you have to you know take you have to give your practice two three years before it becomes established after that i have not seen anybody struggling if you want to make uh, you know crores of rupees if uh, in that case you should become a surgeon and open your center uh, that kind of money can only come in uh, surgical cases and again it does not come to everyone again that the top guy makes the most money and others have to work for years so will you get a job in psychiatry the answer is most likely no so that is one of the cons of psychiatry the number of jobs are very limited uh, most of the people who are getting jobs are getting them in de addiction centers so many psychiatrists nowadays migrate to places like punjab where the jobs are plenty and uh, you can get a job in uh, most of the corporate hospitals but they would not uh, pay you a salary 
they would say that you know whatever patients that you see they'll they'll pay a, a particular amount of money for that so if you're looking for a stability from day one after completing your md the options would be more limited in comparison to other branches but why do you want to get a job my my whole question is why do you want to get a job right a psychiatry is something which is meant for private practice because you don't really need a setup all you need is a table and one good chair for yourself and two more chairs for patients and you're good to go right i i started my private practice from a garage right that, that was also rented so uh, it's it's that easy you just get a, spend some money get some furniture and you can start so getting a job would be very difficult establishing uh, starting a private practice very easy in a span of 2 3 years you get established and then there is no looking back it, it usually you know runs very smoothly but if you want a job immediately after co- completing a md uh, you might get into trouble you, you may get a uh, sr ship or something but if you want to have a job job uh, the options are limited is it getting saturated not really not only psychiatry but no branch uh, is getting saturated in any time uh, in, in in near future and see india is a big country and uh, despite the number despite the increase in the number of seats uh, the speed with which the population is growing still is significant so i don't i don't see any branch getting uh, saturated in near future what will happen in what will happen 10 years later is a matter of discussion but i don't think it's it's happening anytime soon when when i started practicing i i i, I i'm from delhi but i went to noida to start my practice and continued seeing patients in delhi also at that time probably i was third or fourth psychiatrist in noida and i thought you know what if we have uh, three four more psychiatrists what will happen to the practice after that i think now we have 20 psychiatrists in noida itself it did not really make any difference so don't worry it's not getting saturated anytime soon now this is a strange question i keep on getting should i get do it from a private college and people ask me what is the roi return on investment now this is a new term that has entered the medical field that if i spend this much money will i be able to make that much money after uh, i get into practice uh again see uh whether you go to a good government college or private college it does not really change most of the other things of course if you go to a government college you get more exposure and uh, you see more patients and it's anyways better i mean nobody would ever choose a private college over a government college said that even if you go to a private college uh, i don't see a lot of harm um, any major harm in it go to the private college your exposure would be lesser your your, your learning might be lesser but after that go to a government place and do your sr ship you will learn whatever was lacking so uh, should you be spending money for that degree that is totally your call if if you come from a rich family if you can afford it why not do it if you come from not so wealthy family probably you should study and try to get into government college right all right this is this is a classic will you develop a psychiatric illness in fact will it start impacting you as a person all right so i don't think so uh, see the trajectory is the same as it happens in any other branch uh, w- when you did your internship when you made your first dc test certificate i'm sure you must have felt sad right you saw somebody dying and you felt sad and uh, you might have you know uh, gotten a bit upset but when you made your 20th dc it stopped mattering right uh, after some time you get immune to all those emotions the same thing will happen in psychiatry Uh, when you talk to the first patient who has depression and you know he'll share his history with you uh, sometimes difficult details uh, you'll you'll definitely get impacted you will feel sad but you know after 15 20 30 patients it would not really impact you as an individual i mean you are still supposed to be empathetic and you are still supposed to be sensitive to what they're saying but uh, it's unlikely that you would go back home and think about it after after a certain time you get desensitized about these things and i don't think it's ever a problem for anybody uh what are the cons okay there are multiple cons in psychiatry the first con as i said that uh, jobs are limited so if you are somebody who wants to do a job job probably uh, you might struggle a bit uh, again uh, you can join a private setup you can join a corporate hospital and again give 2 3 years even even there your practice starts to grow up so you may not be getting a particular amount of money in the first month of your practice Uh, but it tends to grow over uh, time other uh, bad aspects of psychiatry okay i'm sorry i think a part of this text got uh, under the image so what are other bad aspects of psychiatry now this is something that happens very often uh, our training in mbbs is so much biological 
we we become so comfortable talking about the molecular mechanism and you know the drugs and the mechanism of action all those things that when you get into psychiatry and when you see people you know discussing counseling it might come as a cultural shock if i can use that word i don't think it's appropriate but it might come as a shock to you and uh, you might uh, feel that it's not medical enough and that was that was my feeling uh, when i was doing my md in psychiatry uh, in the second and third year i was very unsatisfied with it because you know i saw consultants telling me that you know focus more on counseling and uh, the other psychosocial aspects and i was like i'm a doctor i i'm more interested in pharmacology drugs and all and uh, not so much in the other softer aspects and i was wrong later on i realized that counseling and you know all these things are soft soft skills are much more important today today i am much more happy doing all of those stuff but probably in your second year or third year you will feel dissatisfied you will feel that what you are doing is not medical enough and uh, you will see your batchmates doing you know more so called medical stuff and but but later on once you get into practice you can uh, practice the way you want if you want to get into counseling thing or uh, and then those things you can do that if you do not want to you collaborate with a good clinical psychologist and they take care of most of the therapy part and you take more more of the medical part and this is what happens in most of the cases after some time you get so busy that you cannot really do those counseling sessions and anyways clinical psychologists are better equipped in doing that so that is another con uh, sometimes you feel you are not medical enough uh, stigma uh, well stigma is there and uh, but i believe a lot, lot has changed lot, a lot of uh, things have changed in last 8 uh, 10 years uh, when we started psychiatry when i started psychiatry in 2011 i feel there was more stigma Uh, nowadays i don't feel it as much or maybe you know i just grew in my career but it doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter because see if, if you need a doctor you need a doctor irrespective of uh, how much stigma is prevalent if somebody develops schizophrenia they'll have to go to psychiatrist right and i think stigma is there for so many branches neurologist they also fa- face stigma you know epilepsy uh, m- many people consider it to be some supernatural phenomena oncologist nobody wants to go to them no, nobody everybody wishes that they never have to see the face of an oncologist so stigma is there no doubt but i don't think it really matters and uh, um, as you grow in your field as you grow in your career uh, there there are so many people who just want to talk to you want your advice that uh, uh, those things stop coming in your mind i mean if if every time you go to the clinic if if 10 people 20 people are waiting for you they are waiting for your help uh you don't really think about stigma and all even if it exists uh you kind of you know work in your own zone it doesn't really matter yeah another good important point i'm rem- i'm reminded of uh, in cons marriage marriage if you are planning for an arranged marriage then psychiatry might be a problem so you know i have seen some of my colleagues uh, who wanted to have an arranged marriage and uh, the especially if you're a guy the the girls and their families were quite skeptical of you know getting their daughters married to a psychiatrist so i mean i i had a love marriage so i did not have to face that issue but i have seen people struggling in the marriage part so if if that is uh, something that you want to consider as a con uh, it is there it is there so i think this is it these are the important points that i wanted to cover and uh, in totality i believe psychiatry is a great branch Uh, not because uh, i am biased towards it of course i am biased towards it but you know uh, even objectively speaking i see the growth of uh, doctors in psychiatry it's pretty good they don't really have to struggle i mean this is a m- misconception that uh, psychiatrists struggle later on it, they do not uh, and it's not only about me it's about uh, all the people that i have uh, been in touch with and they they have been uh, people with different skill set working in different cities i have not seen even a single person struggling but it takes 2 3 years before you get established which is true for all the branches I feel psychiatry gives you a great work life balance. Uh you know when you get into your mid 30s you don't really want to get up in the night and attend emergencies and all. And that way it gives you a great work life balance. It's very satisfying also some people think that uh, uh, uh do the patient really improve? Yes, they do really improve. I mean uh you you can change their lives. I have I've had so many patients who saw one of my video on YouTube came from a far flung place you know some somewhere from up or bihar you know from far flung places they did not even know they had ocd and then they took treatment they became better and they were so thankful same applies for schizophrenia and also it's a very satisfying branch it's a chronic uh, you you deal with chronic illnesses relapses may happen but overall it's very satisfying so i don't really see any big red flags as far as psychiatrists concerned 
uh, but yes uh, another con is that if you don't really enjoy psychiatry if you just take it for the sake of it you may you may struggle a bit in adjusting to it uh, say medicine is something that everybody can uh, get ad- well adjusted to but if psychiatry not everybody will get well adjusted to so you need to have some inclination towards psychiatry only then you should get into psychiatry otherwise not so this is about it uh, yeah all the best do well if you take psychiatry let's let's uh, meet somewhere in some conference say hi to me bye